Well, I suppose the driving passion is the creative spirit. <clears throat> I think in any of the cultural activities, whether it be painting, sculpture, writing, music, or whatever it is, it's the a creative urge that makes you go on. Uh, there's no other reason to do it because you'd be crazy if you start thinking about it too much. Why am I doing this? Because uh, it, it, um, the reward is in the creation itself. It, 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 it is in the pleasure of doing something and making something and uh, aspiring to that inner urge that's within one to produce something. I think anybody going into architecture today <clears throat> has to have resilience. It's, it's a harder world than the one that I, I entered. I think that uh, when I started architecture, it was, it was relatively easy uh, to uh, earn one's bread. <clears throat> today, the universities are producing you know, thousands of architects. When I went through, I think, 20 people graduated and uh, there was a scarcity of architects and there was great demand after the post-war uh, boom situation to, to do buildings. And I, just, I think there's less opportunity for architects today considering the numbers and the heavy competition that's within the profession from the start. But uh, talent and uh, an ability will always come through this so that I think that those who are tettering on the um, uh, being undecided and what they want to do, but they must have uh, a creative urge in, in order to succeed. It's just the same as if you're going to be a musician. You've got to be a bloody good musician to succeed. You can't be mediocre and you certainly can't be third rate. The most valuable skill that an architect uh, possesses uh, firstly is, is being able to create something that is of value to the community. But the second thing is that the architect is very responsible for the cities that uh, we live in. So there's um, uh, this burden on the architect uh, really to acknowledge what society is all about, what society's needs are, and to acknowledge most of all that we're human and uh, and that the human scale is very, very important. And what we tend to lose in cities of today is our whole aspect of human scale. And I believe that architects of the future have got to start looking at society at large and what cities we want to live in and the return to a more human scale value and where the environment in which we live. I've always been a great believer in the vernacular and the way in which they have responded to the environment. We are in a very precarious um, uh, world where energy is of, is of the highest importance. I mean, we're running out of our oil reserves, our, uh, which depend upon um, powerhouses for electricity and all the rest of it. We're sort of re-evaluating coal as an energy source. And so all this means that our buildings have to be less reliant on energy received from natural resources. Instead, there should be a return to living with the environment, which the vernacular buildings in the past did. They didn't have air conditioning. They barely had lighting. And yet people lived reasonably comfortably within the environment itself. So not that I'm advocating the return to the Stone Age, but I am advocating that we should return to a more sensible response to the environment and living without the uh, immediate adaptation of energy uh, consumption, which I think will go, will exhaust the Earth's resources in the end. So it's a must-do situation rather than a, a choice. <laughs>